All right. This is, uh, I don't know if it's still a boarding house. I'm not going to go knock on the door and mess with anybody. But right here, see those two windows? I'll walk around. You can possibly see the door. The screen's still there. That room right there with those two windows. I used to live in there. Let me tell you something about that room. There's no fucking heat or air conditioning in there. Because <laughs> it used to be part of the porch. As you can see from where the brick stops and that's where it starts. It used to be part of the porch and they turned it into a room. And by the fact that there's a sheet up there, I'm going to say it's still a boarding house. And this house is experiencing something. Apparently a truck hit this. Huh? No. Nah, I used to live in that one. Oh, I thought you were fixing this one up. Uh-uh. <laughs> Somebody is. Yeah, I thought you had some work for me. <laughs> you ain't got no work for me, do you? Nah. Okay. Nope. this up now look what do you see up there you see windows you see one two fans so I'm gonna say chances of that being the boarding house are pretty high because you see the fans and you see an air conditioning unit there you see one up there there used to be a family that lived in there now back in the day the guy that owned this house he told me what to pay for it this was a long time ago. He paid like 18 grand for this house. And if it was restored, because it's been, you know, it's been split up, there's all kind of crazy stuff going on. But I would say the square footage of that house is about 4,800 square feet. So if it was like really fixed up, it's probably be like a half a million dollar house, even in this neighborhood, because it's so big and some of the unique features. But uh, yeah, I used to live in that bitch. Just uh, kind of go around. And it looks better than it used to. Let me say it again. And I'll, I'm going to get back in the vehicle and just drive around and show you. Alright, so... I'm gonna just, like I said, this is an improvement. This is an improvement. I'm gonna show you. That house looks nice. Someone got shot over there. Now, what's really interesting as a kid, I didn't grow up in any shit like this. I grew up poor, but my mother didn't look nothing like this. Nothing. Uh, houses were well maintained. People cut their grass. They were poor or, you know, average income. But they had pride in the neighborhood. Let's see. And as you notice, there's a lot of boarded up houses. And everyone's looking at me weird, and I just figured out why. Because I'm driving this X5, and I'm looking at houses, so they think I'm an investor. So, because everybody's staring at me that I walk with looking like, because I don't fucking belong here. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, when I was moved over here, I was still working in the hospital for a few months, and. Well, actually not the hospital, still in the medical field. I was working for LabCorp. And because I had to shave, you know, I shaved and everything, people thought I was a cop. Used to get that all the time. It's like, oh, you the popo. And then and people walk up to me. Wow. A lot of these houses are, um, oh, they fixed that one up. 
that's actually you know, they're in the process of fixing that up you see now you know a lot of people are uh, talking about the economy and money is out here again I am seeing like my neighborhood houses are staying on the market 30 days if that long people are dumping shit remember I said in the video about you know people not tr uh, dropping trash in their neighborhood that's not exactly the case over here oh that apartment used to be some oh uh, you can't see damn like I said I have not been over here in this capacity in a long time but a lot of stuff's changed let's see Used to be a lot of craziness in this house. A lot of craziness on this side. A lot of these places are boarding houses again. There's a there's a high degree of vacancy around here. Extremely high. Now this place, I don't know if you can see, yeah, right there, that yellow place. I remember when the guy bought it because it, it was like, it was a burnout. It didn't even have a ceiling on it. And I remember when they came in and fixed that and turned it into, I think, four or five apartments. Now, he got it dirt cheap because I think at the time, I think he got it for like six or seven thousand bucks. I see five power meters, so five apartments he probably spent maybe 20 grand total and it's a long time ago so he ain't making nothing but money I am amazed at how many houses are freaking gone burn out that house is gone huh well yeah this is what I fell into now understand this looks better <laughs> than it used to this is better now I want you to think of a Suarez of a war zone. That's what this place used to look like. And it was weird because there would be like this really nice house, then there would be madness. And it, it was just strange. Now, for some people, like, that shit ain't that bad because, you know, you're living in some bullshit right now. So it ain't that bad to you. But for me, you know, going from being poor to a you know, pretty good job, making decent money to falling into this shit that was worse than the neighborhood that I grew up in, it was a mind fuck. Now, I think what the people that live here, like if you're coming from New York or you coming from Chicago, this is a come up. Sad to say, but true. But for someone who had never had to deal with this shit, it is depressing and fuck. But kind of goes back to what I was talking about you know experiences um that's enough touring of the uh this boy because it really hasn't changed you know it's cleaned up a little bit hey what's going on people Lyndon cameron here I make a living without a job. But before we jump into it, that's another offer. First link below. Because everybody wants to talk to me. It's like, hey, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? So if you want a consult with your business, just hit that link and you also get annual membership. So I'm doing videos and driving at the same time. And no, don't you go. All right, I am back. It is October. Doom and gloom is about to happen. Holiday seasons are upon us. If you're not ready for it as a reseller, you could have problems. Or not at least preparing. Many people are worried about where they're going to get their next dollar from. Because during the holiday season, and it happens every holiday season, certain corporations have massive layoffs. 
there's a lot of companies that lay off people because the numbers weren't looking good. So you're gonna start seeing those numbers populate the news soon. And also, you're gonna see another culling of eBay because understand, they don't need your small sellers anymore. At one point, did, no, 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 no. You got a better shot with Amazon FBA. But the real deal is doom and gloom, holidays. If you want to make money, you still can. But the biggest problem with making money is you want to make money thinking the way that you currently think. If that worked, you would have the money that you want. Since you don't have the money that you want, it's not working. And this isn't if you just started something, you know, a year ago and you're still building your business. That's totally different. But if you've employing the same tactics for five years, seven years, eight years, 10 years, and you're still not where you want to be, it's not working. It's not working at all. So how do you go about changing that mindset? Because there, there's some conversations that are going on in some of the videos on some of the Facebook pages. And there are people who say, you cannot teach people mindset. I'm going to disagree because I also disagree with the notion you can't change people. And I'm going to lead with that first because we change people all the time. Usually it's for the worse. Sometimes it's for the better. You can change people. You can change behavior by being a certain kind of person. You can make people better. You can make people worse. That is the power that you have as a person. So this whole notion is people don't change. That's not true. People don't change if they're not induced to change. When uh, they're induced to change, they'll change. It happens all the time. A great example of this is you have, say, a black dude married to a white girl. Parents are happy with it. Then... Bam, here comes baby girl. Attitudes change. I've seen that. I saw that up close personal with a good friend of mine a long time ago. It was amazing the difference that child made. So understand, you can facilitate a different mindset. You can uh You can change people's mindsets. You can change how they relate to you by changing your mindset. So now that we've got the, the big thing is, can you change people? Yes, you can. Is it easy? No. Let me be real clear about that. Is it easy? No. It's doable. And the difference between those two points is staggering, but we're talking about the possibilities. We're not talking about how hard it is to make it happen. That's inherently part of the conversation. But teaching people new mindsets. I had the mindset of a loser once in my life. Big time. And my life reflected that mindset. I was induced to change because I hit the bottom of the bottom. The lowest of the lows. And the video that you just saw. I used to live there in that little, it wasn't cramped, I wouldn't lie, because I think I had like a full-size bed, the room was furnished, it was a boarding house, full-size bed, like cramped, but there's no heat in there, there's no air conditioning in there, I was there two years, being in those conditions induced me to change, right now there's a group of silly parents suing a coach because he had a better, more prepared football team. I see things like that and it makes me sad because it's saying, hey, so you worked hard, so you got ready, so you prepared yourself, so you trained. Um, that's not fair. I think that's bullshit because that's part of the collective mindset, but that's another video. The whole deal is you can change your mindset. You can change who you are as a person. It's about desire, reaching that level of inducement. 
Now, with the hustler mindset, because you know, the people's like, hey, it's either something that's in you or something that's not in you. I think that is selling the human condition remarkably short. I looked inside myself when I was younger and I didn't really see much. I would have never conceived that I would have did the things that occurred in my life. Never saw it coming. Never saw it. You know, hanging out in different countries. You know, stationed in Japan. You know, it was an employment. I was in Japan going on five months. Entered into Tokyo, South America, the UK. Been to all of these places. And that was before travel hacks and travel was cheap and all this other stuff. And it happened because I was open to it. Now, this is the big, big thing that really creates a lot of problems for many, many people. They are not open to being successful. They're not open to change. They're not open to being better. They're not open to it because of the narratives in their mind that if I'm to be successful, I must do step A, I must do step B, I must do step C. Now that's part of the indoctrination of education, that you're only good by standardized scores. Now people who go into business and become successful realize that they're good based on the number of customers they serve. It's a different ball game, different set of results. The results in business are cash, results, prestige, you stay in business, you go out of business. Those are some pretty tangible results. Now, where we are right now is many people are, um, they're not, how can I say it? They are not where they need to be mentally. Because there's this big collective national gasp of the American dream is over. The American dream's not over. It was never over. The American dream keeps changing. The average poor person who's not homeless, who's not indigent, would be considered rich by living standards of the 1950s and 60s and 70s to a degree. They have not one television, but sometimes two or three. Cell phones, computers, iPads, a car. May not be the car they want, but they have it. They take trips. They have cable. You don't understand. The poor lifestyle of today was the upscale lifestyle of yesterday. What has really created a lot of problems is the American expectation. People expect to be successful for nominal effort. And when nominal effort is applied and the results of the desired success do not drop into their bucket of life, then it was rigged. It's something's wrong. The games. No, because there, there's this one video that talks about the distribution of wealth across the world and how the greatest concentration of wealth is in the hands of a very small minority of people on the planet. I saw the video, and depending upon where you are mentally, your response to that video is going to be really, really different. I got over, I don't ever think I had rich hate, because as a kid I would use read Forbes, and I was dreaming of going places and owning stuff, and I grew up not too far from an entrepreneur. His name was Mr. Youngblood. He had, I didn't know dude was balling at the time. I just knew him as this nice guy that let me hung, hang around his shop and he had business going on. I didn't understand that I was soaking up that information by just being there because of that exposure. I didn't realize that going down there and saying, hey, could I sweep up the floors? Just hanging out in that environment was gonna be so beneficial later on. I saw hard work equal rewards. I saw that, and they, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Youngblood, they were hustlers, and I look back, and they used to have garage sales every weekend out of one of his facilities, because he had uh, heavy industrial equipment, earth movers, tractors, cow, he had, I didn't know, he was balling, 
He was a developer. I didn't know that. I didn't know what he really did. He was just this nice guy that would let me hang around. So understand that if you watch that video and you come away feeling that it's unfair, you're missing a very important part of the video. You could become part of that minority. And I'm not talking about the people with billions and billions of dollars. Because to get in that minority, you get a net worth of about six mil. You get in that minority. Now, you know, the top, you know, the top twin, you get in that minority with a net worth of about six mil. Because so many people, over half of the people in this country, right now, as I talk to you, October 24th, 2013, do not have $2,000 cash in their checking account. Half. There was a study done. Asked people, if they had to raise $2,000 cash within 30 days, how, how many could do it? Half the people that responded said they couldn't do it. Half. Which tells you that half of this country is very poor. And I'm, when I say poor, I'm not talking about living in a tent poor. I'm talking about I have a nice car, I have an okay to a very nice home, I have a job, but I have absolutely no assets. I have no assets whatsoever. I have no intellectual property, I have no inventions, I have nothing other than the fact that I can go work at a job, earn money, and spend money. That's half the people in this country. Half. There's 340 million people in this country. So we're talking about 170 million people are in that situation. And what really makes that number so interesting is those 170 million people are still all better off than 95% of the people in the rest of the world. Think about that. The folks who have no assets who are able to earn a decent to very good living and buy most, if not all, the things they want, and they're, they're purely consumer-driven, have a better life, standard of living, than 95% of the people in the world. And those are the poor people of our country. Those are the poor people. So, understand, once you start to change your perspective, you'll view information that's given to you and that information is given to you for a reason. Because wealth is like water. You know, when it rains, water flows downhill. Water seeks its own level. I don't care what you do. You cannot stop that process. Wealth is the same thing. It, it works the same way. When you get that enough momentum to get to that level... It's easier to make money. It's just easier. If you had, and uh, there was someone that was after me, it's like, hey, where's the information to turn 5,000 into 100 grand? Uh, to answer that question, it's in all of these videos. Start from 2009 and work your way up to now. Dude, stay in your lane. For real, stay in your lane. But, I'll address that since I brought it up because people are like, hey, you know, where's that information? Where's that information? Say you have $5,000. Now, I'll get back on the topic in a minute. You could turn that into six figures. It'd probably take you about two years if you knew what to do, if you knew where to invest your money. And the most important part of all, you have reinvested every penny. Which means for two years, you'll be working your ass off, spending money, putting money back in the business, and not taking out a penny for yourself. That's how you turn $5,000 into six figures. Many people do it. Because they have one of the most important attributes to being successful. Delayed gratification. Let me say it again for the people in the back delayed gratification. And that's how you turn 5,000 to six figures. Because one of the biggest problems that I have with 
people who take my courses and come in is they're so pressed that they don't have time to become successful because they're about to be ass out. It takes time, people. It takes time. And the beautiful thing is, it doesn't take as much time as it used to. I used to, you know, standard line for me was if you start a business today, expect to spend two to five years before it makes enough money to support you. Two to five. That, that was very realistic numbers. A lot of people don't. That's changed because of the internet, because of disruptive technology, because of all the wonderful things that are happening right now. If you learn how to harness the power of the internet and wed it to your business, you can start a business today and within a year, within a year, be making enough money to live on. And I'm going to put a floor on that because... You know, everyone has their own ideal of what's enough money to live on. I'm going to say 30000 You start today. You do the right things. You invest your money in the right places. A year from now, you could be making minimum $30,000. It's not a grand living, but you're supporting yourself, you're contributing to your community, and you're building self-esteem. And that's the floor. That's the floor. So now back on topic on mindset, on developing and cultivating a mindset and why it's so important. Every winning organization, church, football team, basketball team, these are your roll tie, University of Alabama. Going on 15, got going on probably maybe 16 national championships if things go well this year. That didn't happen by accident. They had a philosophy. Green Bay Packers, several Super Bowls, they had a philosophy. First, Pat Riley, 3P. Los Angeles Lakers, they had a philosophy. All of these teams, organizations, church, Catholic church, they have a philosophy. The most powerful church on the planet. The, most, what, the wealthiest and most powerful church on the planet. Catholic church. They have a philosophy. Now they're going, their philosophy is religion. No, no, no. There's some very shrewd business people in the Catholic Church organization. You do not get that type of power and money and maintain it for centuries without smart people running the organization. It does not happen by accident. Doesn't. Walmart. They have a philosophy. All these successful people had a philosophy. And what's the first brick in the foundation of a philosophy? A mindset. It's the most elemental thing to success is your mindset. That is it. That that is the basement. That's that's the dirt. That's the bear, that's the gravel. That's that's it. And people want to hey, well, Glenda, you know, every game and all that stuff's good, but I want step-by-step -step instructions. I'm going to tell you something. I have a video up here on YouTube. It's, called, it's my most popular video. How to find gold at garage and estate sales. I've had several emails, several comments, people who actually watched the video and more importantly went out and did the did exactly what's in the Philip did exactly what's in the video. Video is like 10 minutes long. A 10 minute long video. There was one guy he said he and his wife went out to garage sales. They didn't even do it a full calendar year, but he said their first year in the business, starting like April, December, they made $13,000. Going out every Saturday to garage sales. From $13,000. Okay? And another guy, uh, he was ass out, but he was, uh, he got a package. You know, he got laid off. He saw the video. He got motivated. And, you know, he made 30000 his first year. And, you know, it was not like, it, it didn't, it wasn't one of those stories like, you know, he came up, but between his package and that $30,000 a year, he was able to weather a lot of financial sto storms. Uh, a woman and her mother, they went out and did it. And they their goal was to make enough money to go out to really nice restaurants every month. 
So they make five or 600 bucks, which they go blow out at fancy restaurants. And then she said, we tip well. So I tell you this because essentially the information to make money, the information to be successful, it's out there. It's on this channel. It's on other channels. It's all over the internet. Any person with an internet access, and you don't even have to have a computer. You don't even have to have Comcast cable. You just need a cell phone or an iPad. Within a year of self-study, you could be earning 30 to 100 grand right now. And the thing is, why aren't more people doing that? I'm going to tell you why. Mindset or the lack of one. Because this is what happens. You start doing something strange, like making money on the internet, building websites, writing blogs. 99.8% of the people you know will go, whatever. I need a real job. I need a nine to five where I get me a check every Friday, every two weeks or 15th on the 30th. I don't have no time to be messing around with no websites. I don't have time to be doing Google Analytics. I don't have time to do any of that stuff, but you have time <clears throat> to <clears throat> sit at a desk every day and watch your life go down the drain. You got time for that. You got time for that. But essentially, the information is out there. The information is readily available. And the reason that more people do not take advantage, they don't have the proper mindset. Just don't have the proper mindset. And that's why I created the Hustler Mindset Project. That's why, you know, and a lot of people go, hey, Glendon, you're a motivational speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a hustler. I say things to try to get into your mindset. And if it motivates you, great. That's a byproduct of the original intent. And what's the original intent of this channel? To sell products. That was the original intent of this channel. If people become inspired and motivated, even better. But that was the original intent. It's a byproduct. I keep saying byproduct because money is a byproduct of service. Many people chase the money and skip the service and wonder why their wallet has nothing in it but lint and dust. The byproduct. The videos on this channel give you more than just advice. They give you a lot of things. And as a byproduct that I make money. Do you get that? So understand. If you want to make money, if you want to be better, really change your life and not go doom, gloom, oh, woe is me. Because right now, I looked at the government shutdown when it was going on and the madness. I didn't get pulled into it because, one, I knew they were going to reach an agreement because they had to. They had to. United States of America default no do you know what kind of upheaval that would create they're stupid but they're not that stupid so I didn't even sweat it and you know the thing with Obamacare it will be ironed out this is the thing people become overly emotionally involved in things that do not really impact them directly like the Obamacare thing there's a large group of people who are losing their minds, who have jobs, who have employee-sponsored health plans. They're not even impacted. And they're like losing it. Some of those folks are the worst. And it's about mindset. I did a study using my personal Facebook page. I put up some bullshit for about two weeks. Got the most comments, got the most likes, just bullshit. I put up stuff about business, cricket, cricket, cricket. If I didn't make the decision to start a business when I did, and I'm going back to, you know, 2000, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. There was a lot of ups and downs. There was a lot of craziness. There was a few times I almost went out of business. And you got to start that journey at some point to reap the rewards. And so many people are not trying to reap it because the mindset's wrong. They're like, well, you know, when the time is right, you make it right. 
That's what you do. You make it right. They go, well, it, I, next year. Next year turns into two, three, four, five, six years, a lifetime. Then they go, um, well, maybe it's not for me, which is mean they gave up because they had the wrong mindset. Go back to the beginning of this video. See where I used to live in. And there's a person, and I didn't show her face on video because I didn't feel like trying to get the permission. I don't know. Like, no. She used to be a lovely girl. She's still in that neighborhood doing the same thing, going on damn near two decades. Mindset. She don't think there's a greater life for her. She don't think there's anything out there better for her. She don't, she don't see it. So... What she's going to do is continue to do the things that she's doing. And her life's going to erode away. There are many of you watching this video right now. Your life's eroding away. You have dreams, wishes, ambition. And you haven't even got started. You talk about it. And then you feel all this angst in, your, in the middle of your belly when you realize that the clock is ticking. You can start today. You can create a better life for yourself and your family 2013 with all this evil going up because in the midst of the upheaval is opportunity there are people getting rich right now but they're not selling some sexy i mean there are people out there who are selling like pipes making millions there are people out there selling shoelaces making hundreds of thousands a year it's out there if you want to make the money it's out there but you have to get the proper mindset to start, maintain, and keep going. That's the fuel in your tank. That makes the big difference. So, chew on that. Absorb it. Think about it. All right. This is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side. And be sure to subscribe to my email list.